number of our clients, particularly in the automotive industry, have asked us about integrating a PFMEA, which is a failure mode and effect analysis format into Timer Pro. This is a website for DMAIC tools, excellent source of information for this, and this is where we based a lot of the input that we put into our format. Now, having said that, we recognize that many people have their own specific format for the FMEA format uh, and you can incorporate those very easily through Excel into Timer Pro. And the uh, PFMEA is basically to allow you to design different risks to the different steps in your process and that's what we're going to cover here. So I would recommend that maybe this site uh, as a source that you could look at to learn additional information. It does give you basic breakouts here. It's talking about the, um, the risk priority number here and how it's calculated, uh, with the severity times the occurrence times the detection, and it also gives you a, a various scales here. Now again, this is another area where we realize that people have their own uh, interpretation of these values, and you can customize all this within the Timer Pro implementation of the FMEA format here. As we use this as the basis of our development here, now we come over into uh, Timer Pro here, and here we've got a process. Now, we give you some uh, ergonomic tools, obviously, under the ergonomics area here. So you can see we've analyzed this process and we get various ergonomic stresses uh, showing up here. We color code them according to the severity. So, for instance, the red is a very severe situation. It says no stress, light, moderate or severe here. So you can identify different stresses here. And in this example, we have an operator uh, putting parts in and out of the machine and obviously we'd maybe like to raise the machine here to take care of that here. So we have the ergonomic analysis which will, so you can pop this out to a Yamazumi chart and in a couple of seconds all that information presented to you in Excel of course with the embedded videos right in here and then what we can do is we can come back over here we've now added a new option under here in the summary area so we wanted to generate a PFMEA sheet for this, we click on it here. Now we've created a standard format that comes with the package and of course you're free to uh, alter that to meet your own particular uh, needs and the other videos in this section will cover how to do that. So it's very much like using a work instruction. You, you could have any number of forms in here. This is the one we give you. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to call it my PFMEA one and just click on the open here. I can also send out the HTML and the PDF format, just like I can with any work instruction. Click on the OK, and it will start building it here. And this is the default that we have here. It's pouring it in one sheet for each of these stations in our process here. So if I go back to the left side here, you can see we here's our first operation here. And if I make this a little smaller so we can see it and move it around a little bit easier, you can see here, here's our uh, ergo analysis in the background in Timer Pro and it's been transferred over here. Each of the activities in turn has been placed into the sheet here and this particular sheet is the one for, of course, for the uh, mold parts. You can see it here, mold parts. And we're color coding the ergo risk has been sent out here as well. And we're also embedding the videos links in here. So you can come into this one if we go to the second station here, which is the stack parts, this one you see right here. You can see it's color coded also, and we can see that same video direct from the PFMEA form just by clicking on the play video link here. So if we make this full size now, we can go and look at this. So here we've got the hazard selections here. Now there are various supporting forms here that you can add. In fact, you can add any number of supporting forms. You get one here called Code of Safe Practices. Just a basic format. You can put your own format in here. We also have notes and recommendations. Format the sheet any way you want. And we have a forms control sheet. This is kind of important. This is the one where we've actually picking up all the values. You can see here the frequencies and so forth, the severity. These are coming directly from the website we showed you a moment or two ago there. And those are going to be referenced over here in here. So you can see here's a hazard column. So I can click on this here and it brings up a drop down. These are all my ergonomic hazards that I can have here. These ones are actually coming from the forms control area. If we go back to this, here you can see it. Uh, if I go back up to the top, ergonomics, awkward working position, back bend and so forth. All of these items here now appear over here in the drop down right here. And we'll show you how we reference them as well. So let's imagine this is an awkward working position here and the note we're going to put in here is going to be uh, need to raise the machine. 
Right, so we have that right there. And then the occurrence. Now, this is information been taken from the website over here. If I scroll down here, you can see here the different severities here. And uh, here's the occurrence scale, for instance. Right, so if we come back over here to our Excel sheet and I go to my occurrence column here, the information here is exactly the information that is used in here. So again, please feel free to put in your own scales in here to match your own internal practices here. Let's come back over here. And I'm going to say the occurrence of this is going to be almost all the time. So it's going to be this one here. The severity is going to be pretty severe. So I'm going to put it, say it's high here. And uh, you can see what's happening here. It's actually multiplying this out. So right now I've got 10 times 7 in the detection. It's certain to be detected. So you can see that's a one there. This is one that we have to look at here. Look at different uh, codes here. Uh, these are being controlled by these settings up here. So my default action severity, right? This is the severity here. If it's nine or above, severity will turn red, saying that's something you have to take care of. So if I was to make a selection here, and I was to make it instead of seven, I make it hazardous. Right, you see that immediately turns. That's something you have to look at. The serious level here is default action. Seriousness is the occurrence multiplied by the severity. So anything above 18 is going to turn red. That's why this turned red here. And the default action RPN number, you can see the risk priority number here. If it goes above about 100 here, this would turn red. So if I was to make this a 2, you can see that turns red here. So what we're doing here is we're using a couple of different triggers uh, because in looking at this in some detail, what we notice is people have different rules that they apply. So you can define your own rules here and we'll show you how to do that here. So this is your baseline that you're analyzing right here. And then further over here, you can see it says uh, risk control measures. What can we do to uh, control this? So what we're going to say, we're going to say raise a machine. And then we can say, is the item complete? Yes, no, or it's in process, right? And again, these items here are being picked up from information over in the forms control area here. So if I just scroll down here a little bit, you can see here, yes, no, and in, in work or in process, you can put there, whatever you'd like to put here. Okay, so it's picking it up right here. And there's some actions being triggered by that. I'll say no at this point. And then here's the risk ratings here. So if control measures are implemented, right, so this is going to become uh, hopefully less than 1 in 1,000. The severity will become no severity. And the detection, again, would almost be certain here. So again, it would be very low here. Now you'll notice here my risk reduction here is showing it as being blank here. And that's because I haven't indicated it's completed. So as soon as I say this is completed here, yes, and I go back over here, I've reduced my risk by 179, which is the difference between 1 and over here, the value we had here was 180 because of the way I was playing with this here. And then you can continue go out, you can do different statuses and so forth. But basically, you can put anything you like here on these sheets and uh, it will uh, work automatically for you here. You can see if also it's assigning, the Timer Pro is maintaining it. You can see the number up here, PFMEA1 being maintained by Timer Pro on revision 1. So you can create multiple revisions of this. If you want to add additional uh, conditions, additional hazards, you just insert an additional line in here. And we'll cover that, how to do that in a separate video.